Uh, I would submit that Israel did not steal anybody's land. This is another thing I've heard the last couple of weeks, words like occupiers and colonizers and apartheid, which I don't think people understand the history there. There, there. The Jews have been in that area of the world since about 1200 B.C., <clears throat> way before the first Muslim or Arab walked the earth. Today what we're talking about is Bill Maher and pretty much his disgusting support for Israel. And we're not just talking about like some sort of like lib Zionism about like the right to exist. Bill Maher seems to find a way to justify every single Israeli war crime and defend Israel from any criticism including several times bringing on Netanyahu to his own HBO show and recently let Netanyahu come on specifically to talk about Kanye West's anti-Semitism but actually ended up saying just like Ben Shapiro that the real anti-Semites are actually Israeli critics in Congress Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib and Bill Maher basically serves this up on a plate for him because he actually reads the quotes to Netanyahu who Netanyahu's like it's real anti-Semites right there now I've made a video on Bill Maher before and basically what I've diagnosed is he's a western chauvinist now western chauvinist is a term you've heard from groups like the Proud Boys and Gavin McInnes who popularized it and they are proud western chauvinists basically saying Western civilization is the best thing in the world. We are unapologetic about that. Every other society is inferior. Judeo-Christian values, all that, you know, bullshit and stuff. And although, you know, popularized by them, I think it's a good term and to associate people like these. And I've actually made a whole video. I think it was called like the rise of Western chauvinism from Gavin McInnes to Sam Harris or something like that. And just basically talking about how this rhetoric about Western supremacy rears its head so much when we talk about the Middle East, specifically Israel-Palestine. But because Israel is like westernized and it has like Western values, that's superior, right? And when they do anything wrong, well, at least Israel is better than the rest of the Middle East. It's a democracy, don't you know? Totally not an apartheid state. And that's the frame of reference I want to think about when we're talking about why Bill Maher supports them so much. Because as you guys will know, and we'll talk about a tiny bit, Bill Maher was quite famous for being a prominent atheist on mainstream TV. He used to say loads of stuff against Christian conservatism. But when everyone started going mad about ISIS, he kind of switched with everyone else. And Islam is the worst. Islam is incompatible with the West. Muslim countries are backwards. Muslims are more violent than anyone else. And through this frame of reference, that's why he always is an apologist for Israel, because Hamas bad but also probably never notes and hasn't researched it. Who helped Hamas flourish in the first place? Could it be Israeli intelligence who wanted to undermine ELO and Fatah? Maybe it was that. So basically what I'm gonna do is play various Bill Maher clips from, you know, throughout the years, and we're gonna talk about them. Anyway, before we go any further, please like the video. And in the comments, I guess, do you know anyone who likes Bill Maher? Like I made that whole video talking about how He's just a bit ridiculous now being like this anti-woke center-right liberal or something. So let me know down in the comments. Also follow me on social media at The Cavernacle on Twitter and on Instagram. Instagram is where I'm posting all about my travels around Asia and I'm putting that all in my highlight reel. And if you care about that even more, I'm gonna be posting one exclusive video per month. We already uploaded the one about Vietnam and next we'll be talking about Cambodia. That's exclusive to my patrons. If you wanna become a patron, I'm trying to build up as many one to three dollar patrons as possible and the benefits of that are getting access to these videos also my nintendo switch friend code and also the discord server so if you care about any of that check it out also check out the subreddit and check out my second channel down in the description so i guess before we get into bill maher i should talk about my own views on like israel and stuff i'm someone who i feel is pretty well researched on the topic obviously i did you know degree in history and did a master's in international relations i'd say the middle east specifically is an area i have a lot of expertise in and as someone who's learned like the real history of like medieval Europe as well and how terrible anti-semitism has been since the Romans burnt down the second temple in Jerusalem and stuff I'm not someone who doesn't know about all the terrible atrocities to Jewish people and as an anti-fascist who also specializes in history I'm someone who's constantly talked about the construction of white supremacy which really goes back to medieval Spain in regards to how they treated Jewish people and Muslims before colonizing the new world so I'm someone who does know about the history of this stuff really really well and 
Jewish people have just been treated absolutely terribly throughout European history, specifically also Middle Eastern history, but that's got its own like nuances there. Obviously, I feel loads of sympathy for Jewish people. And obviously, you guys also know anti-communism has historically gone in hand with anti-Semitism as well. And you're seeing that right now in America with the stuff about Soros. Also, a lot of, you know, right wing types talk about Jewish people controlling the whole economic system. And although it seems like contradictory, often this does go in with anti-leftism because, you know, it's about the Jewish conspiracy to take over the world. And the Jewish conspiracy to take over the world actually uses communism to overthrow the established Western world order. And even Joseph Goebbels talked about Judeo-Bolshevism undermining Western civilization. Any anti-fascist, any leftist, any communist should be a fighter against anti-Semitism. But that really has nothing to do with anti-Zionism because I am an anti-Zionist. I do not think Israel should exist. I don't agree with its right to exist. And obviously the original form of Zionism was more a response to anti-Semitism, but the more modern forms of Zionism also have a massive religious flavor about owning the whole of the territory they see as like Zion and stuff like that. And obviously more militant forms of Zionism with Israeli settlers and stuff. So yeah, on a religious level, don't agree with it. And as someone who's against settler colonialism, I do not agree with it. Israel to me is the same as South Africa. It's the same as Northern Ireland and previously the UK administration of Ireland. Same as Canada, same as Australia. It's the same as the United States. It's the same as New Zealand. It's a settler colonial apartheid states. And that is pretty much all you have to tackle it from. It's apartheid, it's settler colonialism, just like other forms of settler colonialism. If you're against colonialism, you should be against the state of Israel. So although this isn't gonna happen, my dream would be a secular Palestine where Israelis, Palestinians, and all the other groups who live in both territories could exist in peace. It's probably not gonna happen, especially now with how polarized and far right leaning the Israeli populace is getting. Pretty much, you know, really wishful thinking at this point, probably a two state solution is the best we're going to get. If that ever even happens, because it's probably not gonna happen because of how much the Western powers back up Israel's crimes and how much they are complicit in Israel's crimes. So if any of you are watching this video and you feel like, you know, I know what's going on in Israel is wrong and I know what it's doing is wrong, but I'm scared of someone calling me an anti-Semite or saying I hate Jewish people. You guys should understand that Zionism and Jewish people is not the same thing. A lot of people on the far right in Israel would like you to think it's the same thing so you don't criticize Israel because then apparently you're an anti-Semite. It's not the same thing. But Bill Maher does not strike me as a fanatical ideological Zionist. He strikes me as someone who is a Western chauvinist who by default supports Zionism because he sees Israel as good, as democratic, as secular. And he believes all Palestinians are basically barbarian Muslims because Hamas exists. And because Hamas are bad and believe bad things, that means all Palestinians basically deserve their oppression and they should actually stop fighting their oppression because that provokes the Israelis who are justified in doing all these terrible crimes to them. So like I said, Bill Maher has obviously gotten a bit of fame for being quite an outspoken atheist. It seems weird he'd then support a state that has so much religious Zionism in it, which they use to justify the horrible violence um, and colonialism they do. I just wanna go for a couple of clips. And there's a page called Stand With Us. It only has like 18,000 subscribers, but it's all about, you know, supporting Israel. And they made a video uh, called Bill Maher on Israel. It's about one minute. So let's have a look at this quick. One of the frustrations I had while I was off is that I was watching this war go on in Israel. And it was frustrating to me because there was no one on liberal media to defend Israel, really. We've become this country now where we're kind of one-sided on this issue. I would also like to say off the bat that I don't think kids understand and when I say kids, I mean the younger generations, that you, you can't learn history from Instagram. There's just not enough space. Hamas's charter says they just want to wipe out Israel. Their negotiating position is you all die. And, uh, you know, as far as Gaza goes, um, it's, it's amazing to me that the progressives think that they're being progressive by taking that side of it, the Bella Hadids of the world, these influencers. Um, I just want to say, in February of this year, a Hamas court ruled that an unmarried woman cannot travel in Gaza without the permission of a male guardian. <laughs> really? <laughs> that's, the pro that's where the progressives are? Bella Hadid and her friends would run screaming to Tel Aviv if they had to live in Gaza for one day. From the river to the sea, Palestine, Palestine will be free, is I think what she chanted with people. That is a PLO 
slogan that means Israel from the river to the sea is that there will be no more Israel. So just in that short clip, which is being shared by a pro-Zionist group, you can see where Bill Maher comes at this from because Hamas is bad and because Gaza isn't as liberal on like secular values and stuff, that means they deserve it and you shouldn't support them. And this is really infuriating, but this is actually something that I used to be influenced by. When I was young, I think I was like 18 or 19, I did a module at university about like Islamicism and we read a lot about Hamas. And because I was like buying into this more new atheism stuff when I was younger, I used to kind of, you know, agree with this argument. Like, why are you defending Gaza and Hamas when they're so terrible? And why are you defending this place which has terrible rights for like women and gay people and stuff? And like using this kind of like liberal identity politics to try and justify like colonialism, I think sometimes it's an effective tactic when you're talking to people who are more atheist. But obviously when you stop being so naive, like I did when I was like, you know, 2021, 20, you change quick when you're a young person. I'm sure a lot of you people can agree. Then you realize that, yeah, that doesn't really matter the conversation. Even if every single person in Palestine believe what Hamas believe, that doesn't mean they deserve this brutal occupation carried out on them. And that is pretty much like Western chauvinist thinking to justify all sorts of things like British colonialists would do the exact same thing like we have to govern these territories inflict terrible violence on people because they're backwards they must learn from us they must be more like us and we will keep doing violence until they learn and again how many people do the Israelis killed compared to how many Israelis are killed by Palestinians it's not even comparable but this is how he justifies that colonialism is that you know you personally wouldn't want to live there that says more about Israel which blockades the Gaza Strip and creates the conditions where Hamas can flourish in the first place. It's one of the most densely populated places on earth. It's got one of the highest rates of unemployment. People don't even have clean water to drink and you're being bombed and harassed by Israeli security forces all the time. Like, do you not think that is a hotbed for radicalization? And what should they do instead? Just be quiet and die? Like, yeah, I don't agree with Hamas, but it seems only natural that if you create such horrible conditions for people, they are going to react in a pretty radicalized way. And if you want to stop them from being radicalized, then you don't create these conditions in the first place and you don't occupy them. We often see the same arguments with the IRA in the UK. It's like, oh, the IRA are bad because they killed civilians in England and stuff. And it's like, yeah, that's bad. Why do they do it? Why do they do it? Why don't you stop the occupation of Ireland first? And then they won't do that. So with Hamas as well, stop doing that to them they'll stop doing it and they'll have less support. And then like I was saying earlier, it's now pretty established that Israeli intelligence actually helped the Muslim Brotherhood establish Hamas and helped Hamas thrive because they wanted to divide the Palestinian resistance, the Israelis, and it worked. But now you have an even more fanatical enemy who are probably not gonna surrender or stop at any cost and who do believe in a more radical religious ideology than the PLO did. And also one more thing which makes me laugh. He says that the US is one-sided on support for Palestine. The whole of the political system in the US is pretty much one-sided on support for Israel. Like this isn't even a bipartisan issue. What was it like four Congress people who voted against funding Iron Dome and even some of the progressives like Jamal Bowman voted to fund Iron Dome, right? A guy who actually criticizes Israel and Bill Maher thinks that there is no one to defend Israel on media anymore. So he has to come back and do it. Absolutely laughable. This guy lives in such an entitled bubble. So let's move on a bit further. I don't wanna talk about this clip too much, but I do wanna just show you that this has happened. So after um, the invasion of Gaza in 2014, Bill Maher was talking a lot about all this stuff. Um, and first, before we get into more of it, I just wanna talk about his friendship with Netanyahu. And he brings Netanyahu on his show a couple of times uh, throughout Bill Maher's like really long run. Uh, so here is the first clip just to show you them discussing this before we get on to the one that came out like a week ago where they're talking about Kanye West. So uh, let's start with the first one. But, but do you uh, think Israel does have an image problem? Yes, I do. I think there's a reason why uh, some uh, people are so quick to uh, compare Israel to the Nazis. Uh, Israel, that is a democratic country that exercises unbelievable restraint. You know, during the war, I was asked to uh, by uh, our Knesset, our parliament, to go to London. We were being smashed uh, by some of the British media, most of it. Uh, and they said to me, what do you say? Uh, I can imitate a British accent, but you, you get the point. <laughs> what do you say about all these civilian casualties in Lebanon? And I said, uh, do you really want to go that route? And you said, yes. What about the horrendous number, which was close to 1,000, undoubtedly a tragic number? 
I said, well, the only way we can say if we are proportionate or disproportionate is to look at the only other example of a city rocketed by about the same number of rockets, 4,000 rockets, and that's London. And Churchill's response was to obliterate Dresden and close to, I think, altogether 200,000 German civilians. They were bombed by day, firebombed by night, deliberately. So we are disproportionate, disproportionately restrained because we seek to just attack the rocketeers who are committing a double war crime, both rocketing civilians and hiding behind civilians, both right. war crimes under the Fourth Geneva Convention. So, now, so why do people resort to this lie? Number one, European guilt. They did nothing to help the Jews during the Nazi Holocaust. And by comparing Israel to the Nazis, they absolve themselves and they say, you see, the Jews are just as bad. We're not. I don't really want to talk about Bill Maher in that clip because he doesn't say much, but the belief that firstly, the British media is against Israel is really funny as well because the British media is overwhelmingly pro-Zionist anyway. But I want to say something interesting, right? So I don't really agree with Nazi comparisons when it comes to Israel. And that's what he's saying that, you know, people say Israel is just like the Nazis. That's what Netanyahu is saying. For me personally, I don't think you even need to go there because Israel shares so many similarities with like settler colonialism a lot more than Nazi Germany, in my opinion, although Nazi Germany did conduct settler colonialism in Europe. I believe like apartheid South Africa, Northern Ireland, places like that, I think are a better example in comparison than Nazi Germany. And of course, I don't think the Nazi to Germany comparison is helpful because it's just inflammatory to Jewish people, right? But I don't think it's really helpful just because, you know, we're dealing with this ideology which is steeped in like the Jewish people's, you know, flight from the Nazis and fight against the Nazis and just Jewish religion and stuff. I don't think we need to talk about Nazi Germany inherently. But then what is curious about this is Netanyahu is literally using Nazi propaganda about Dresden to talk about how Britain acted worse than Israel do against Lebanon. And this is really interesting, right? So basically, you guys have heard of the Dresden firebombing. Um, the Dresden firebombing um, killed about 25,000 civilians. And Netanyahu is acting like the British decided to target Dresden because they just wanted to kill German civilians, but they didn't. Like Dresden was a very legitimate military target. It was also a massive hotbed of like Nazism as well. And Joseph Goebbels made it into a propaganda issue, basically saying, you know, they killed over 100,000 Germans, maybe even 200,000 Germans in this firebombing. Look how barbaric, you know, the British are. And I just want to read a quick article to talk about how this is literally like Nazi propaganda that he's using to try and make Israeli war crimes not seem as bad as British actions in World War II. Dresden has been made into the German Hiroshima, an outrage that reversed the roles of aggressors and victims, exposing the horror of total war. The campaign to turn the city into a symbol began within days of the bombing. Joseph Goebbels, the Nazi minister of propaganda, told reporters in neutral countries that Dresden had no war industries and the raid was an act of cultural desecration and wanton mass murder. A Swedish paper published a death toll between 100,000 and 200,000, which Netanyahu referenced there, and this inflated figure proved remarkably tenacious. After Germany became the major fault on the Cold War, even the communist rulers of East Germany commemorated February 13th by denouncing the Anglo-American air gangsters, a phrase that had originated with Goebbels. The exaggeration eventually reached the West through the destruction of Dresden, a 1963 bestseller by David Irving, the British historian who later became notorious for his attempts to minimize the Holocaust. I find this comparison very, very curious that he's literally talking about how People call Israel the Nazis, but me as the Prime Minister of Israel, here is Nazi propaganda about Dresden for you, right? And was made famous in the UK by like a literal Holocaust denier who became famous for writing a book about denying the Holocaust, right? Again, very, very weird thing that Netanyahu has a history of doing is just revisionist history about the Holocaust, like basically minimizing the German want for doing it by saying it's more like the Palestinians. He's done that in the past, like very, very bizarre. Bill Maher with his Master TV show is giving this guy a platform to spread uh, Nazi myths about Dresden and Israel actually shows great restraint. Again, Netanyahu, if you want to make the point that Israel aren't the only people who target civilians, I wouldn't really be going there with Nazi myths about Dresden written by a Holocaust denier. And obviously plays into a wider point sometimes that fanatical far-right Zionists don't really give a shit about anti-Semitism when it comes to pushing their Zionist agenda. Because if you didn't want anti-Semitism to flourish and if you didn't want to amplify anti-Semitism, why are you pushing Nazi myths about World War II? Anyway, so nice, Netanyahu, who's not the Prime Minister anymore, was invited back on Bill Maher's show uh, last week, I believe, 
To talk about Kanye West, and you'd think as the former leader of Israel, as someone who cares deeply about anti-Semitism, as Netanyahu does, he would condemn Kanye West and all the deflection, you know, Ben Shapiro basically saying, you know, Kanye West is bad, but Ilhan Omar is the real anti-Semite. And basically saying how people who are against Israel are the only anti-Semites. Not all these people who say horrible things about Jewish people. So what did Netanyahu have to say about this? First question, Kanye West this week has said, I'm a bit sleepy tonight, but when I wake up, I'm going death con three on Jewish people. Will Israel retaliate? <laughs> You know, um, <laughs> anti-Semitism is the longest uh, hatred in history. It goes back thousands of years. Uh, we've dealt with bigger problems than, uh, than these stupidities. But, you know, the communists blame the Jews for being capitalists. The capitalists blame the Jews for being communists. You have a problem, blame the Jews. It's old stuff. It shouldn't have any place in civilized discourse. And that's the reason we established uh, the Jewish state, so the Jewish people would have defense against uh, these absurdities, and sometimes they're coupled with violence. We don't let that happen again. Okay. Um, I just want to read a few quotes from American congressmen, just to Congress people, rather, just to, to show that uh, Kanye's West is, uh, Kanye West's comment is not really out of order with some things that are said by people in more official positions. Uh, here's one. Israel has hypnotized the world. May Allah awaken the people and help them see the evil doings of Israel. Ten years ago, if you read that to me, I thought that would be from Hezbollah. That's an American congressperson. Another American congressperson says the reality of Israel's apartheid government goes on to say the occupation and ethnic cleansing Palestinians live with every day. Another one says Israel targets media sources so the world can't see Palestinians being massacred. Uh, I have three questions for you. Are you massacring Palestinians? Are you ethnic cleansing, and are you an apartheid state? No, no, and no. I mean, these are all ridiculous uh, charges against the one democracy in the Middle East, the one democracy that upholds human rights, that defends freedom, and is America's best ally. So I think these people should... Um, uh, wake up to reality, but I, I think that's a, a, a far uh, too great a hope. It's not going to happen. We just have to defend ourselves against these people because they purvey lies. You ever hear the word uh, fake news? This is fake old news. It goes back thousands of years. We're not impressed by it. So this is a tactic being used throughout the media, right? So Bill Maher, although he doesn't name Rashida Tlaib and Ilhan Omar, they did both say those things, so we know what he's saying there. He's basically saying what Kanye West has said sounds similar to that, right? The Ilhan Omar tweet got some backlash because she used the word hypnotize and they're talking about you know, old anti-Semitic tropes about Jews hypnotizing people and she apologized for that and that's bad. Do you think it's comparable to anything Kanye West has been saying about the Jews? Kanye West even said he admires Hitler, right? And he wanted to, apparently he wanted to label his 2018 album Hitler because he liked Hitler so much, right? See what these guys are doing? They're downplaying actual anti-Semitism in favor of trying to link it with anti-Zionism and saying, well, these things are the same, right? Even you watching this, if you support Israel, if you are like a liberal Zionist, if you're a right-wing Zionist, do you think Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib are more anti-Semitic than Kanye West? Do you think their rhetoric is more dangerous than Kanye West's rhetoric? Do you see people taking the rhetoric of these two people and plastering it on like Nazi imagery and hanging it on highways or putting it on like stadiums or sports games. It's pretty clear Kanye West saying these things is far more damaging because it's actually anti-Semitic to people being anti-Zionist and describing the truth which Amnesty International and Harvard Law School, how many presidents were lawyers who went to Harvard? They both say Israel is an apartheid state, right? But Bill Maher is trying to play defense for Israel by using gross anti-Semitism by Kanye West to try and say, well, this isn't surprising when you have a climate in America which doesn't like Israel because, I don't know, two Congress people, one a Somali Muslim and one a Palestinian Muslim, say that Israel is an apartheid state. That's clearly just as bad as Kanye West. And actually, it sounds like something Hezbollah would say. Again, absolutely disgusting 
racism coming from both these two people and it's pretty clear these people don't actually care about anti-semitism because if you care about anti-semitism you would call it out no matter what not see probably one of the worst examples of public anti-semitism we've seen from a celebrity probably since like mel gibson or something like that in america and then say this, this is just as bad and pretty much the same as criticism of Israeli occupation and Israeli apartheid. Again, as I've always been saying, people like Ben Shapiro, Bill Maher, and Netanyahu, they don't care about anti-Semitism, they care about Israel, and they care about pro-Zionism above all. That means if you are part of their media machine, which is pro-Zionist, and you have people involved in it, like Candace Owens playing defense for Kanye West's comments, well, you don't fire her, you don't take action against her, you say, oh, you know, it's a disagreement, like Ben Shapiro said, because you don't actually care, right? Because now you're seeing people take Kanye West's comments and use it as an incentive to start saying their own anti-Semitism as well. And if you know anything about groups that lobby for Israel in America, you will probably know this isn't surprising, because I always say, I think APAC and Israeli lobby organizations have more influence on the Democrats because you don't really need to do it as much with the Republicans because they have so many Christian Zionists among them and Christian Zionist funders. Christian Zionists who solely want Israel to exist to start Armageddon in which, you know, like 95% of all Jewish people will die and a couple will convert and get to go to heaven. But this is the stuff these people flirt with when they say stuff like this. Again, totally disgusting and it's pretty clear Bill Maher was giving him softballs so they could both agree about how anti-Semitic Ilhan Omar and Rashida Tlaib are and how Kanye West anti-Semitism, while bad, is pretty much just pretty standard in American politics nowadays because of people like this. Absolutely disgusting. So now let's move on to Bill Maher talking about like actual, like visceral Israeli violence. So we're gonna look at one clip of him talking about the Israeli invasion of Gaza in 2014 and one clip of him talking about the Israeli bombing of Gaza in 2021. And we're gonna listen to how he talks about these things. And notice how the panel he has basically in the first clip is pretty much made up of mainly pro-Zionist people apart from Reza Aslan. And the second one, he's having more of an argument. And it's pretty clear that either Bill Maher does not really know the reality of Israeli violence or he just doesn't give a shit because he's a Western chauvinist and he thinks it's actually a good thing to brutalize Muslims because, you know, some of them believe horrible things. So if you support Hamas because you ideologically agree with them, or if you by default support Hamas because they're fighting back against Israel, that means you deserve to be, I don't know, put in solitary confinement as a child, killed as a child, shot by an Israeli sniper if you work for the press, put in solitary confinement as an adult for decades, be arrested and then watch Israeli settlers who may have an American accent demolish your house and steal your land. You just deserve that because you're a Muslim. Oh, Israel's horrible, but where are the protests about crucifying people? Where Boko Haram has killed more people than Israel this year with the war going on. But not with American weapons. And I think that's why you're seeing a great, a, a lot more emphasis in well, the United States. You're going to defend the Hamas West. today. I'm not defending That's... Hamas. All I'm saying is that if you're going to have a situation where 1,600 people, 85% of them civilians, hundreds of children are being killed every day with American because weapons Because they're putting them in for, front of them. That is, <laughs> that is nonsense. That is not nonsense. That's the these, absolute these truth. Are these are you can say this all day. These are terrorists who have a two-front war going on against Israel and their own people. First of all, first of all, Amnesty International, which is on the ground right there, did a month-long review of this. They have found no evidence whatsoever of any kind of human shields being used. They did say it's that a, Hamas leaders... But, and why are but weapons you in the schools? Say, but it's the a time. war. It's a war that Hamas started. And somehow when Israel reacts to this, they have to do everything in a way that doesn't kill any civilians. People die in wars. Now, I've said this before on the show, if the situation was reversed, Hamas would kill every single person in Israel. The reason why that's not happening is because they can't. Because they can't doesn't make them good, it makes them weak. You know what, last time I checked, last, last time I checked, uh, we're better than Hamas is not Israel's national motto. Uh, this idea that somehow because Hamas is a terrorist organization and Israel is a democracy, there is no moral equivalence. You're absolutely right. There is no moral equivalence. It's the democracy that requires greater criticism. It's the democracy that has to live up to the values that it ascribes for itself. Uh, trotting out the lie about human shields and how Hamas just, you know, always, you know, steal Palestinians. Been like, you can't hit us because we've got human shields. And also, it's really funny considering 
the Gaza Strip is one of the most densely populated places on Earth. And Israel do um, airstrikes on it, right? And then they say, well, Hamas were hiding behind civilians. Well, if you're gonna do airstrikes on all these people, you're probably gonna kill a bunch of civilians. And even though Hamas, like many terrorist groups, operate within civilian areas, well, that's your excuse then. You kill civilians because Hamas are in civilian areas. And like Reza Azam was saying, yeah, Israel describes itself as free and democratic. So there's more criticism on them. And it's this idea that because Hamas are bad, you can do whatever you want to Palestinians. Because Hamas fight back against Israel, you can do anything you want. And there is no bad thing. Like he's saying there, and he gets, says this again later in another clip in 2021, that it's war, civilians die, right? But how come it always falls like massively disproportionately on the Palestinian side? Because Israel have Iron Dome, funded by the United States, and Hamas's rockets barely even touch Israel in the first place. And then Israel go in and bomb the shit out of Palestine and bomb the shit out of Gaza regularly. So here's one more clip in 2021 where Bill Maher talks about the war again and talks about, you know, Israel bombing Gaza, bombing the AP building because they say there was Hamas inside and they found out there was no Hamas inside. Don't think that's a defense for Israel uh, uh, engaging in possible war crimes in Gaza. Uh, or uh, engaging... Well, Gaza in... fired 4,000 rockets into Israel. What would you say Israel should have done instead of what they did? So... How I could mean, you consensus... not commit... So, so, I mean, international lawyers are pretty clear that they have a right to defend themselves, they have a right to respond to, at military targets, but there was a sense that the response uh, was probably a war crime because it did not sufficiently avoid civilian casualties. Uh, but they purposely not... put the rockets in civilian places. That's their yeah, yeah, strategy. Yeah, well, likewise, Israel's defense ministry is in a civilian area. I mean, both sides do this partly because they're crowded countries. War Israel. is a crime. I, I mean, it seems like a silly argument when people go to war. I mean, there are certain things oh. that are beyond the pale. This seems like, I mean, it was a normal war. People die in war. It's a horrible thing. But... He... Uh, but, I mean, there, we have developed laws of war precisely to restrain the inhumanity of war. We don't allow chemical weapons. But I don't, we don't know how allow, else you uh, respond to when you have four... I mean, what if Canada <laughs> fired 4,000 rockets into America? Uh, I would submit that Israel did not steal anybody's land. This is another thing I've heard the last couple of weeks, words like occupiers and colonizers and apartheid, which I don't think people understand the history there. Beginning in the 20th, 19th century, they started to return to Palestine. We have a map. I want to show people forget what the map looks like. This is what was on the table at the beginning. The green is the part that the Arab population would have gotten. It's a good part of the country. It's the good part, a lot of it. Look what Israel has, a little sliver by the coast and the desert in the south. That second map is what Israel has today. Yes, it is a lot more. But doesn't it behoove the people who rejected the treat that the half a loaf and then continue attacked? Hamas's charter says they just want to wipe out Israel. Their negotiating position is you all die. So Bill Maher talks about people not understanding history and then starts talking about Hamas when he's talking about how Israel have taken basically the whole territory for themselves, right? So he shows a map where it has originally what the UN said Israel got, right? And then it shows another map where Israel's basically taken it all. And then he's talking about how it's not stolen land. He is being a hypocrite in his own little rant about Israel. And then he starts talking about like a really simplistic version of history. It's like this revisionist version of history, apparently. And I've heard Seth Rogen say he got taught this uh, at like Jewish school and stuff. That Israel is just empty land. And then after World War II and all the horrors of World War II, they went there to create their own nation state so they'd finally be safe. But of course, even like Bill Maher was shown, loads of people lived there. And there were Zionist militias fighting the British occupation. But then, of course, after the Second World War, you had loads more European Jews who had fought in the Second World War for various allied nations or fought as partisan groups come and fight with the militias to actually take over a significant part of Palestine, which they got. And of course, that stolen land. They massacred Palestinians. They kicked them from their homes. They destroyed their homes. And they continue that to this day. And some people in Israel will not be satisfied until Palestine does not exist and Palestinians do not exist. Remember that Abby Martin clip with that guy who says the solution to Gaza is just bombing and killing all of them, right? I don't think there's any answer to it. Really? There's only one way, like, I would carpet bomb them. You would That's, carpet bomb them? It's the, only, it's the only way you could deal with it. Like, or, or try to stop them a different way. 
it, it never worked. You mean all Arabs are Gaza or? I, I believe that they, like, I hope to believe they're, they're not, but I do think they are, because I never, I don't, I don't trust them. You can't trust them. And that's the only way I believe that. The only, the only way is just to stop it completely. Bill Maher thinks that because Hamas say shit like this, they're the only ones who want this. I promise you, Bill Maher, there are a lot of people in Israel, especially right now, who would love to kill all Palestinians as well, as we are seeing with the rise of this far right in Israel itself. But he mentions like Canada and he mentions the war. And I do love this notion that because Hamas fight, it means Israel are justified to do whatever they want. And I do believe it's because Western chauvinists like Bill Maher fundamentally do not care about Muslim lives. They fundamentally do not care about non-white lives. So let's give another example, right? Imagine if in Ireland, or let's say Northern Ireland in the 1970s, that the IRA, uh, obviously they bombed British army, they bombed British civilians in England. Imagine if the UK responded by flattening tower blocks or massive streets of Catholic homes in Ireland, right? They would get their jets and bomb the shit out of them. That is basically what Israel do, right? But can you imagine how people like Bill Maher, especially as someone from a Catholic background as well, imagine how he would feel about that. I would say that he would say that the British shouldn't do that at the very least. I think he'd also say that the reason the IRA do bad things is because of the British occupation. And because they do bad things because of the occupation, the solution isn't, oh, let's go kill loads of civilians who are, might support them. It's why doesn't the occupation end? Why doesn't the colonialism end? Like it's on the colonizer. You want the war to end. You want the fighting to end. Stop the colonization. Stop apartheid. That's how you get things to end. You don't just kill more and more civilians, creating more and more supporters of Hamas and supporting more and more Hamas soldiers because when you make people so desperate, what do they have to lose? In Ireland, this took the form of the IRA. They weren't religious extremists. A lot of IRA people historically have been left-leaning and stuff like that. But in Palestine, it originally took the form of the PLO and Fatah and more like secular Muslim groups. And because of Israel's actions through their intelligence and because of the radicalization, more people started supporting Hamas and more religious extremism. And now that's the people who fight. But Israel and Bill Maher, if you want to stop that, stop doing terrible things to them to start with and then stop apartheid. But this is like the Western mentality and this is how Bill Maher views things. Because Israel is a democracy, because Israel has good women's rights and good gay rights and stuff like that, that's worth preserving, right? We should preserve Israel because in Bill Maher's view, all the Middle East should be like Israel and Gaza is not worth saving. Palestinians are not redeemable because of Hamas and because of the way they treat gay people and women. So therefore they deserve their oppression. They deserve their ethnic cleansing. They deserve these killings because if they weren't evil inherently, then they'd be more like the Israelis. Again, just absolutely like gross stuff coming out of Bill Maher's mouth. So Bill Maher was raised Catholic and had a Jewish mother. He said he's not religious. He said he's never been inside a temple. So Bill Maher's attachment for Israel, I don't believe comes out of any sort of religious Zionism or sincere religious beliefs. I think it's all about Western chauvinism. And that is what new atheists are really all about. It's about Western chauvinism, sure. Christianity is stupid. Sure, Judaism is stupid, but Judeo-Christian values are not stupid. They're the foundation of Western society. And Islam, yeah, that's dumb as well, but it's also way more violent, inherently more violent, and Muslims act more violent because of their religion, and that's the prime factor. And that's how Bill Maher sees Israel-Palestine. Hamas act like they do, and they have support because they're Muslims. And that's pretty much it. No factors about colonialism, no factors about poverty, no factors about the constant aggression done by the Israelis. It's all because they are Muslims. And I'm gonna try and compare actual, really visceral anti-Semitism to anti-Zionism to try and help with this agenda. And I'll get Netanyahu on my show, pretty much disgraced former prime minister of Israel to trot out Nazi myths about World War II and also say Kanye West's stuff isn't that bad. It's actually Ilhan Omar who's the real anti-Semite here. So I think Bill Maher is a good example of people who might be fairly like socially liberal or even like, you know, anti-woke liberal. And they think they're like good people. Like Bill Maher used to criticize the Iraq war a lot. But it's like those Tulsi Gabbard supporters when she was more like, you know, pretending to be a leftist. These people don't actually care about Muslim lives. Often their anti-war position comes out of a place of, I care about American lives. I care about American waste, you know, waste of money and stuff like that. I don't care about the collateral damage. I don't not like the Iraq war because we're killing Muslims. I don't like it because Americans are dying in a fruitless war. And that's like where I also used to say Tulsi Gabbard's 
anti-war stuff came from, it wasn't that she hated the killing of Muslims. She's someone who supports Modi in India and made a big career to start with talking about why won't Obama say Islamic terrorism? And that's Bill Maher as well. So for Bill Maher, isn't it terrible that Hamas shoots so many rockets into apartheid Israel? He doesn't talk about Israeli settlers. He doesn't talk about the IDF killing children, imprisoning children, generally harassing the population of Israel. And despite the fact even more groups now have come out and said Israel is an apartheid state, he still feels like he has to defend every single thing they do. And it feels like they could never do anything that he wouldn't defend because he would always say, but Hamas. So yeah, Bill Maher is gross and has lost like any credibility he ever had with criticizing things like the Iraq war and criticizing Christian conservatives. If you just spend all your time promoting pro-Zionist propaganda and getting like one of the most powerful Israeli people on your TV show to say all this shit and also basically downplay any crimes they do and pretend like most people in America are against Israel. Most politicians are against Israel. Most of the media is against Israel. In Western countries like the UK and US, literally in the UK, it's very hard to have a political career while being an explicit anti-Zionist, right? If I wanted to become a Labour MP, I would be destroyed in two seconds by Keir Starmer's Labour Party just for saying I'm an anti-Zionist. Bill Maher and Netanyahu are saying those clips that the UK press and political structure hate Israel and call Israel Nazi Germany. It's just fundamentally untrue. My mic literally was not working for like the last five seconds of this video. So I hope everyone appreciates the dedication of me setting up everything just to film me saying bye. But yeah, if you like the video, like the video, let me know what you guys think down in the comments. And if you made it this far, thank you for watching.